A warm namaste viewers, welcome to yet another insightful and futuristic episode of Beyond Shoot. And today we have the privilege of sitting down with Dr. Gitanjali Yadav. Dr. Gitanjali Yadav currently holds the esteemed position of Senior Scientist at the National Institute of Plant Genome Research and a Professor of Data Science at ISER Bhopal. In addition, she is also the co-founder of the Global Citizen Science Movement that is Semantic Climate and serve as a trustee at one of the renowned colleges affiliated with the University of Cambridge in the UK. Renowned for her expertise in genomics, structural bioinformatics and data science, Dr. Yadav's journey epitomizes the transformative impact of interdisciplinary research. Her pioneering work extends into the in intricate realm of complex networks, artificial intelligence and big data, utilizing the cutting-edge tools to unravel the regulatory networks and engineer crops for future sustainability. Recognized with numerous prestigious awards and honors, Dr. Gitanjali actively participates in esteemed academic societies and policy panels. At NIPGR, she has pioneered the establishment of the India's first in-house academic cloud, gaining widespread attention for its unmatched capabilities within the nation. Beyond her scientific pursuit, Dr. Gitanjali Yadav is deeply committed to outreach, public health and international science policy. Serving as an advisory board member for several city knowledge cluster initiated by the Office of the PSA to the Government of India, she passionately advocates for effective education and promotes the adoption of open notebook science. In response to the pandemic, Dr. Yadav initiated Protocols from Home, a free series of online talks aimed at helping students acquire data science skills in the absence of the traditional classrooms and labs. Furthermore, she collaborated with the UK Health Security Agency for the new variant assessment platform program to train the public's health officers from the WHO in genomic surveillance of SARS-CoV-2 during the pandemic. Dr. Yadav's multifaceted contribution reflects a commitment to advocating knowledge, fostering education and addressing the global challenges. Join us as we explore her journey and uncover the challenges she has overcome and the opportunities she has embraced and gain insights into the trends shaping the future of bio-curation and data science. So without a further ado, I extend my sincere welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for uh, providing us the opportunity and welcome to Beyond Show. Thank you, Sonia. First of all, let me congratulate you and compliment you because this series is extremely important mm -hmm. where maybe listeners, your listeners might be students, maybe early career researchers, people get to know what others have done and how they've come about. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that you thought of me. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, ma'am. So ma'am, uh, to start with this episode, could you please share uh, about the overview of your academic journey, research interest, and what all factor that fueled your expertise and passion uh, for your uh, interest into this field? Academic journey, my academic journey uh, has been diverse. I, um, I started with, uh, you know, an honors, a graduate degree with honors in botany. And during that time, sometime, everybody was at the end of that. Those were the days in the previous mm -hmm. millennium where everybody thought that business is the thing ahead. Science is not so much a future. So all of my classmates and peers and a lot of my friends in other subjects, English and chemistry, were all choosing this thing called MBA. Mm -hmm. And it was like who went to the beyond you, which was the best school in India. Yeah. And I was like, why study botany if you have to go there? And then I asked my teachers and uh, my my seniors, what other options are there other than India? And they said, oh, there's so much to do. You could become a technician for a comfort of microscope. You could also think about maybe research, but some people find it boring, so you might consider it, but it's good to stay in science. That time it now outreach Kaneta, but I got the idea that it is possible to stay in science as long as you can make it seem like you know interesting um, and so therefore I went in for a master's course 
And sometime during that master's course, I felt that it's not enough. And this is another thing a lot of students get doubts mm. today also. Yes. Yes. From a bachelor's in botany, your only option is a master's in botany mm. or a master's in something related to botany. And my issue from the beginning was that expected to do either MBA is expected or a master's in botany is expected. So I wanted to do something different. And I started, that is so silly to say just now, but I started literally looking in newspapers for what kind of master's courses are available, something that catches my eye. And then I found a, a department in Delhi University doing biomedical research. Not much else was there. It seemed to be a new department. So I actually got the university special and I went to North Campus from South Campus. And I uh, remember at that time, you know, arriving outside the gates of the mm. Ambedkar Center for Biomedical Research and saying to the guard, Ki bhaiya, andar jane denge. So he said, Haan, jau, the, dekho kya hai to andar I went. There were a couple of labs. There were some setting, some students working. All of I've never seen a lab before. Of course, being in a college, mm. we are mostly studying. I was one of the talkers, but still I had not had a lab laboratory experience except for the laboratories and colleges and so on. So a real lab. And then I said, who can I talk to? Who knows everything about it? So somebody said, talk to the director. And uh, then uh, somebody else said, but who are you who want to be the director? And then there was this lady, uh, a senior looking lady, and she said, Kya, kya shor mach rahe hai bahar? I said, this girl has come and she wants to meet somebody and she doesn't know what she wants to talk about and she has no appointment. And then I said, I'm with Anjali and I want to, I want to study here and I want to work here and I want to do biomedical research. So she started laughing and she said, Aajo, aajo, baito. She had time for me. Aaj ki date pe mere office mein chal ke niche se jo teen do roads hai, teen guards ke points hai, koi bachcha mere tak aani sakta sarak pe se. But from the road, I walked in and I sat with her across her from the table and she said, what's the matter? I said, I'm very interested in doing something and biomedical research sounds very interesting, but I don't know how to do it. And can I, can I do anything about it? I'm a graduate in botany. And she said, uh, we don't have a master's program. We have a PhD program. Mm -hmm. We've just started. But it's a good thing to have a master's program. Maybe we will start mm -hmm. one in a couple of years. I said, no, can you start now? <laughs> then she said, then she laughed again. Then she said, um, maybe we can start sooner. Mm -hmm. But at best, it will be next year. Keep a lookout in the employment newspapers, mm -hmm. we will probably have a master's program. It may be a better idea to do a integrated PhD kind of mm. program rather than a master's and then a PhD, we might consider putting it together. We are thinking about it. Mm. Now notice that she didn't say yes, ho sakta. she didn't say Tum kaun ha se mm. ho. she said ki, um, ho sakta hai and keep a lookout, you know, mm. and that little hope, that yes. seed of hope was probably all that I needed. So mm. I just spent that year with my grandparents, my mm. dad and dad. This is Professor Daman Sanuja, the okay. former director of the ACBF. Mm -hmm. She rose in ranks and became the director. Mm -hmm. And she's a brilliant woman. I mean, she's a, a woman par excellence. She's, she's one of my role models. I have many role models, but she's one. At that time, I didn't know her. Mm -hmm. And so I waited a year. I spent that year with my mm -hmm. grandparents. And Daddy was very ill at that time. And that way, I got a year with them, which I would not have otherwise ever, because my dad was in the army. We were always traveling. Okay. And we never used to spend a lot. But that year, I spent entirely with my grands. And then when I took in the newspaper ad came, there was mm -hmm. an integrated PhD program and applications. You had to have God uh, exams by the first interview, second interview. I don't know what all they had. But that I was there and I thought it was for me and I was so sure it was for me. I told my dad that I to Delhi and I to He said, no, what are you doing? We will get good girls, 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 we will get good So he, uh, I will see what I will So dad came with me to, to the same Ambedkar Center for Biomedical Research. On the day of the first entrance exam, okay. he sat outside, I sat inside, I took the exam. Um, and of course, I got through and they said he had a interview, the first round of interviews are tomorrow for all the students who have passed the exam. But Dada Ji said, no, 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 interview, what do you decide? Kar lije aap log. Then the guards told him, sir, it's not like that. You have to take the interview. So I said, where will I take the child? Where will I take So they said, there are many people here. They said, where will I take the child? You can say, the house was not our house. But Dada Ji was just trying to get everything done faster. And then, we took the interview next year, next day. I cleared the interview. 
I cleared the final. No, the results were not announced at that time. But Dadaji wanted to meet the director, the teachers, the professors, mm-hmm. and to make sure that if you go out of the house, you will not be able to And I was so embarrassed. And I said, Dadaji, let's go, let's go, let's go. And people were just laughing. The were laughing. And they laughed at me throughout the two years later when the results were announced and I joined the program. So I was the first, um, you know, batch of ACBR students of master's integrated PhD program at the ACBR. But that changed my direction. So from what mm-hmm. you see, I got into biomedical research, mm-hmm. even though we are taught to think that botany is not botany, is not going to be done, you can do So I, I kind of proved, this doesn't say, this doesn't go to say that I didn't like botany. As you can see today, I'm at a plant research institute. So that means I did like plants. But it was something to prove to myself in those days, of outreach, you know, that YouTube, mm-hmm. the options, the idea, you don't know where to go, what to do. But I showed to myself and a lot of my juniors, I think also, that mm-hmm. there is a possibility that you can do anything at any point yes. of life. In Cambridge, in Oxford, in the rest of the Western world, mm-hmm. students get to choose social sciences, natural sciences, mathematics as special subjects. Our here was all zoology, botany, or chemistry. But it was all set, right? So I believe it was, a, it was an internal change for myself at that time in my academic journey, that you can do whatever you want. So that one thing I did, I did biomedical research. I, I, I specialized in stereochemistry. At the end of the master's, during the integrated PhD, at some point I discovered that I have to do something else. And that I have been forever in my life, that I move on. I, can't, I feel stagnation mm-hmm. is the thing that you can't. So I felt that after two years, I have to do something new and something else. It was great going that there. Was that was MSU. That was master's. It was an integrated PhD that I joined. Mm-hmm. And after two years, instead of completing it, I jumped ship again, and my teachers were like, "Kitanjali, kabhi to teh, kuch tehraab lao jivan mein. To tehraab to aaj bhi nahi aaya hai But uh, then I moved to the, then I thought, where should we do a PhD? And the PhD that I chose at that time to do was in computational biology, immunology at the leading institute in India at that time, which I was told was the National Institute of Immunology, and I believe it was. And um, so I got there and I got into the NII entrance, interviews, everything. Did my PhD at NII. Again, I was the first student in bioinformatics where also a lot of people were saying, kya computers ka? you know, what are you doing? This is not research. And I find that even today, there is a mentality yes. among students to feel that if you do computational biology, that maybe you're getting away from biology. Mm-hmm. But the term biology is chip code to computational yes. because it is biology by mm-hmm. you know, computation for biologists. And I think more of us need to understand that it's an integral part yes. of the way we do research. And as we go forward, today, it's very today and going forward, there's nothing except yes. data. So data is across the world, across all silos of all subjects. Yes. Data is everything. Yes. And data science, therefore, is priority. But look at the I would mm-hmm. say to a lot of students, I go everywhere and try to tell students, don't be afraid of computational yes. biology. Pick it up. And it's easy to pick up. And AI, you know, it's it's the next thing that's going to happen. Let's learn it now mm-hmm. and let's become experts before the world realizes mm-hmm. that you need experts yes. and we'll already be there. So so I did a computation and I completed my PhD and I was the first student and it was a brilliant uh, set of things that I did and great mentors in the Yushish mm-hmm. and Gokhle was my co, co, co-supervisor. We, and all, both of these guys were very, very young at that time. They were not mm-hmm. the directors and secretaries that they are today, but they were such young men saying, Kitanjali caliber, all that is caliber, you know, you can't be mediocre. And that is just what I wanted somebody to say to me at that time. You just can't be mediocre. Whatever you do, just do it there. And that's what I want to say to students today. Just don't let somebody make you stumble into mediocrity. It is so easy to fall into mediocrity. Just stand out where you are and you can. You know, that some high drama is always possible in the mundane uh, things that you do in life. And so I completed my PhD. And then the question was, ab kya karna hai? So then I uh, wanted to go to the Harvard Medical School because mm-hmm. I wanted to go back. This is still biomedical research mm-hmm. and I, I consider myself, I did consider myself at that time that I'm the cutting edge of all biomedicine in the world and I can change cancer therapy and a lot of things and I should go to the Harvard Med School because all the heroes and heroines of science go there. <laughs> and uh, then suddenly it turned out and that's what my supervisor said to me. He said, do you know that right now in India, this area called computational mm-hmm. biology is booming. There are lots of new institutions. Mm-hmm. Have you considered getting a job? I said, no, no, I have to go for a postdoc. Mm-hmm. And he said, have you considered mm-hmm. leading a lab yourself? And he made me believe that I can do it. And as a fresh PhD student, a lot of people don't have the self, 
कॉन्फिडेंस दे कैन डू इट ही सेड मैंने तुमको बहुत बार लाइव मीटिंग्स में देखा है मुझसे तो ज्यादा तुमसे डरते हैं सारे स्टूडेंट्स की तरह तुम चला लेना बट थोड़ा अच्छे से बात करना सो देन ही सो देन आई अप्लाइड टू अ कपल ऑफ प्लेसेस एंड आई गॉट इनटू अ कपल ऑफ प्लेसेस बट आई चोज टू बी एट द नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ प्लांट जीनोम रिसर्च एंड दैट डिसीजन टू बी इन अ प्लांट इंस्टीट्यूट और टू रिटर्न टू प्लांट बायोलॉजी वाज आल्सो बिकॉज़ आई फेल्ट दैट कंप्यूटेशन इज न्यू but computation in plants is even less uh, done by people and you need more so the nation the scope mm-hmm. to do work of course you can always contribute mm-hmm. to cancer and to major human disease in public health that is threatening the world but there are fewer and fewer people uh, at that time at least 20 years ago um, there were fewer people uh, thinking about computation in plant sciences and i felt that i could and i did not also want to step on the same things that i had done till then so you want to have an independent area and so that brought me to the national institute of plant genome mm-hmm. research for a year i was in the library downstairs we had a red of mail email in those days the usko badal ke i set up the it infrastructure mm-hmm. and the, the kind of lesson you learn by practice there is no course no teaching nothing can teach you stuff that you do so i learned everything by doing for the first 5 years we set up the computational infrastructure the then director professor ashis datta was so supportive mm-hmm. he on one hand he knew this is a very young fresh student who doesn't have any experience in anything on the other he knew that you know a, a young person early career researchers can also be molded and so he had this balance between things and i believe that i was able to manage research as well as the it administration because it became part of so we adapt humans adapt like anything else and when i knew this is part of the job then it became part of my job And so that is how I got to where I got, and then the research interests began with the idea that uh, my PhD was in natural product chemistry of antibiotics and microbes. So I started started my own lab with natural products in plants. At that time, I was just thinking one or two classes of plants, but over the years, what I've discovered is plants are making like everything under the planet is being made by plants, and there's so much. that we need to learn and understand about uh, phytochemicals and plant emission so that is one major area of research in my lab still but there's a lot of new things that i have diversified into over the last kitne saal ho gaye 18 saal so i'm thinking when, when, when you joined ma can i join in 20 uh, 2006 20 after 2020 or 2021 both in 2006 so it's been uh, this year in april i completed 18 years at the institute So it's great to I would say uh, evolution it's a kind of i i agree with you are absolutely right what is evolution to biomedical uh, then to then to immunology and computation and, and data science plants. and then coming back to plants with the tools that i have learned so yes. i use chemistry i use uh, stereochemistry i use geography i use botany i use uh, all the tips and tricks i learned in biomedical research in my work mm-hmm. and i think that enriches enriches me yes. somehow i can say yes. it but it does enrich me somehow so now your specialization in genomics and structural bioinformatics uh, is commendable and so how do you apply all these expertise in addressing the challenges of food security and ecosystem conservation um yes this is interesting um food security from the point of view of increasing productivity of crops mm-hmm. refers to one particular function in plants or process in plants called photosynthesis and the thing with photosynthesis is and it's connected to so many other things it's about carbon sequestration mm-hmm. right so all of पौधों के पत्ते कितने बड़े हैं फ्रूट कितना बड़ा है सीड कितना फुल ऑफ ग्रेन फुल ऑफ फुल ऑफ विटमिन और न्यूट्रेंस है और दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन हाउ मच फूड इज बीइंग मेड बाय द प्लांट हाउ मच बायोमास इज बीइंग मेड एंड दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन फोटोसिंथेसिस बट फोटोसिंथेसिस फॉर द लास्ट स्कोर्स ऑफ मिलियंस ऑफ इयर्स हैज हैड अ फ्लॉ Mm-hmm. and that flaw in photosynthesis which nature has somehow not rectified well has but not fully is that this little enzyme that is at the at the border of the living and the non living which converts inorganic carbon mm-hmm. into food which is organic mm-hmm. carbon we are all organic carbon life forms right mm-hmm. every single life form on the planet or other planets if there was life would be a carbon based life form so i'm a carbon chauvinist but that carbon is the organic carbon is being made from or inorganic carbon in the mm-hmm. atmosphere yes. and that transition can only be done by this one enzyme mm-hmm. called rubisco and rubisco has a flaw that wo carbon se better oxygen ko pasand karta hai mm-hmm. right and this dual nature of rubisco which is therefore in its name mm-hmm. also 
has been a problem in the sense of carbon sequestration. So Tobisco prefers to do oxygen mm -hmm. and take oxygen as a substrate, which cannot be changed because that is also an important mm -hmm. process for the plant. What nature has done over zillions of years is that it has come up with ways of making Rubisco not see oxygen. So separate Rubisco and oxygen so that more carbon comes in. And how is this separation happening? Either it is happening in time or in space. Mm -hmm. When it happens in time, it's called a temporal separation and that you see in your seafood plants, in camp plants. When it is ha happening uh, anatomically in space, though a box ke andar band kar do rubisco, mm -hmm. or oxygen bahar rahega, andar nia sakta, that is a crans anatomy. Mm -hmm. So this is the system by which nature has come up with separating oxygen and rubisco so that this flaw can be overcome. Mm -hmm. What we are doing through data science is to study the organisms that do this separation between rubisco and oxygen best. And this has been done best by the phytoplankton in oceans. Within the oceans, there are the cyanobacteria and there are the green algae. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the green alga, mm -hmm. Chlamydominus renhardii. And this little unicellular piece, it's a unicellular green alga, we call it clammy uh, nickname. Mm -hmm. And clammy, itna achhe se. So what clammy has done is it has come up with a new mechanism of having a microorganelle within the chloroplast. This microorganelle is a non-membranous organelle, but it's a it's a liquid fluid mm -hmm. thing. And it's a liquid phase, fluid phase, it's called the bilingual, of course. And it is chock full of rubisco. Or uske under carbon, it's like a concentration camp for carbon. Carbon aage to bhaar nahi sakta, bina, bina map ke, bina organic conversion ke, bina uh, you know, fixing. Mm -hmm. And oxygen cannot enter. And even though there are no um, walls, no membranes, the starch plates connected. So my aim was because we know all of everything about clammy, you know, the genome, we know the transcript, we know the nuclear as well as the plastidial as well as the mitochondrial genome. So we know everything in terms of data, high throughput data about clammy. Can we use that to extract things about what makes Rubisco so uniquely efficient in clammy compared to CAM C4, C3, everything else? And we found some key genes there and we believe that transferring those to other mm -hmm. plants or crops particularly mm -hmm. might help them improve and that is my little bit of good security with colleagues at Princeton, colleagues in the UK, colleagues in the US and within India and that was the very big successful four or five year program that we did together. So that's food security. Mm -hmm. Conservation, uh, conservation is my personal passion mm -hmm. and um, I, I think India is a biodiversity hotspot but most of the people working in biodiversity are wildlifers, ecologists, mm -hmm. cafe policy makers and forest department officials. Sure. There are no genomicists mm -hmm. who want to understand what are these genomes of these you know, these, these these native species that we have in India and what kind of treasures are being held. Mm -hmm. We talk about bioprospecting. We do a lot of bioprospecting. But I think it's not really, I think there's still a lot of scope for to do things there. So my aim is to understand the genomes of these uh, these specific species in uh, unique to India or native to India. Plants, of course, to start with, but I'm trying to move on to something else. I'll talk about that later for my next 10 years. But for now, I'm trying to understand these. And it is also helping me, when I studied the native species, I discovered that the biggest problem India is facing in its biodiversity um, um, platform is invasive species. Mm -hmm. And there are so many invasives that are threatening to, our grasslands are corbett mein jao, you will not see the tiger, but you will see lantana. Mm -hmm. Because lantana ma corbett, the tiger se zada bhara hua hai, but lantana pe kya kar rahe hai, hum lantana ka management is a very serious issue for India mm -hmm. and also for the Tiger Project but there are very few genomicists mm -hmm. who are wanting to understand the lantern genome and understand why it is so dominant so that this is a grassland mm -hmm. invasive. If you go to let's say mm -hmm. Delhi se kahan jate hai, Chakrata Dekban mm -hmm. weekend pe chuttiyo mein tum kahan jate ho? Ham log upar uh, hamesha nikal jate hai gaadi utake uh, Chakrata Dekban mm -hmm. hara bada favorite hai. Vaha pe you have these oak rhododendron native forests mm -hmm. of the Himalayan foothills but the entire undergrowth is chromolima odorata, parthenium bhara pada hai, kyun bhara pada hai, ki kaha se aagya, oh corotodendron forests mein, parthenium and chromolina to nahi hona tha, but they are there, so these invasives people are not studying, and I think when we talk about biodiversity, we should also equally talk about conservation, and so we need more people, so I have partly got away from crops, you know, and to be able to have somebody who focuses on, on plants which are not crops, and not 
very important from an economic point of view, but studying them may someday save the nation in ways that are important. So as a lecturer at the University of Cambridge and a co-founder of Semantic uh, Climate, how do you balance all these roles uh, as a researcher, educator and a policy maker? Uh, I don't know the right way to answer this question, uh, but the truth is that you cannot have an enabling environment for research if everything else is not in place. Mm. I believe that being organized is very important mm. and research will be organized or true research will be enabled if, if an environment that enables research mm. is there. And that will only be there if the right policies are in place, if the right infrastructure is in mm. place, if the right people are funding the right kind of work. And so therefore, we cannot as scientists be siloed in just doing our research and assuming everything else koyor sambhal lega. The idea of koyor sambhal lega always comes right back as a boomerang to, to bite you. And so therefore, I think I began... I didn't really begin any of my non-research work for the first 10 years of my research career. I was in the lab, I was setting up the IT administration of NIBGR, I was busy getting grants, busy getting papers, busy, busy thinking about promotions. And at the end of 10 years, in this room itself, I felt, Ye kya, is the rest of my life going to be just this, these four walls and good research, good papers and good, uh, you know, lots of awards and things. And then I realized that kahin kuch farak karna zaruri at that time because I was so, um, you know, I had also had two children by then. And I was thinking ki ab to, you know, ab most family tells you, ki, you know, kaam pe thura kaam dhyan do, abhi shadi kar lo, abhi fir, you know, family kar lo, kuch wasa to ho gaya. Mm-hmm. Uske baad bhi to kuch evolution chahiye. So at that time, then I applied to this program at Cambridge and I moved out of India and I went to Cambridge as a group leader. And I discovered from day one. That you know, the moment you reach Cambridge, you're told that these are the basic things. This is security. This is your pass to walk in everywhere. This is your card. And um, you have to meet somebody in our outreach department to tell what your work is and how it will connect to society and how you are interacting with the, you might potentially have something to do together with industry. Mm. I just stared. I said, my research, I know I'm doing good work and uh, I can meet whoever you want me to meet, but, but um, outreach and um, and industry connection, um, I don't know what they said, don't worry, talk to these people, they'll find out. So when I was speaking just like with you, I was telling this lady the kind of work I do, she came up with three different ways by which I could immediately connect to the industry which she was aware of. Mm. She knew what research questions are being handled in the R&D with respect to agriculture and crop science in the UK. And so how my research coming in as a new group leader could immediately be connected to some of these uh, these projects and how I could get funds and they could get funds together to contribute to the society. This is something which was completely new for me. And the other thing was you had to do outreach. You had to do at least a couple of lectures a month mm-hmm. with school kids. You know, just telling them about. And we used to have open mm-hmm. days there. Open days here are here, but many people recently start. Bad may start why? So all of this happened later. This is 2015 when I joined Cambridge, and I was stunned that you know. And I thought, "Kim, I'm not a researcher. I'm a researcher. I'm a scientist. I'm not a teacher. I can't teach." And I was so sure I cannot teach that I didn't even try. Mm-hmm. And that is another lesson. Don't tell yourself, "I can't do it." Don't do it. Don't do it. And so I started teaching, not just at Cambridge as a lecturer for mm-hmm. students in data science, but also to school kids and also to public citizens who used to come to the botanical gardens. So the botanic garden interviews led me to realize mm-hmm. Kitnazar. So then when I came back to India after the during the pandemic, I began doing much, much more because at that, what I discovered was the world, mm-hmm. the Western world, let's say the, let's say the Western world is an IDC, it is so successful, mm-hmm. but they are not just locked up in their labs. They are meeting industry, they are meeting school kids, they are meeting each other. Mm-hmm. They're talking across silos like chemists are meeting, physicists mm-hmm. are meeting, mathematicians are meeting and listening to each other. Which became a you know, my friends tease me now that you are constantly in the in the you know in the in the in the view. Why are you so much in the view? It's because I go out of my way and speak about what I do and talk about what I do. I think it's important. Yes, it's important now because uh, you know every uh, to reach our school kids, it's very interest uh, very uh, necessary to interact with them and uh, 
सो लाइक ऑप्शंस लाइक दिस ओपन साइंस और हम लोग ओपन डे कर रहे हैं तो 22nd इज आवर ओपन डे बिफोर द पेंडेमिक आल्सो वी स्टार्ट ओपन डेज आई मीन दीस आर वेरी सक्सेसफुल थिंग्स दैट आर हैपनिंग तो इस साल हम लोग एक सेटअप कर रहे हैं हमारा स्टॉल होगा एआई एआई स्टॉल बिकॉज़ अभी रहता है स्कूल किड्स को हमें एआई धक्के देके सिखाना पड़ेगा इन स्कूल्स आल्सो नाउ दे हैव सब्जेक्ट्स द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी हैज Uh, insisted mm. that there is going to be AI being taught from school itself. Mm. So in our stall, we are going to set up a little place where students will build AI models, mm. and whoever does, we'll have prizes for them. Oh, so we have made 20 second pieces, which are right. But it's all it all began, and I think India itself began to understand. So when I came back to India, when I returned to NIPD, mm. right here uh, after my five year stint at Cambridge, I was first of all not feeling stagnant, which was my first ten years. Mm. Mm. So I knew my research is good, my papers, my my students. It's everything is well, but I myself also felt re re energized in some way or refreshed in some way, and I came back feeling that I can bring things back to India. So the first thing, and then director, you know, my director said, "Kitalpi, what is it that you saw in Cambridge that you want to bring to India?" So tab mein ye AI cloud jo humne set up kiya, that is something we used at Cambridge, and there I knew that I want it here in India. So I've set it up at. Um, I'll talk to you about it maybe later, but that is something I I brought yes. out and I feel good about it. So man, because you have expertise uh, and experience at both the places. So how do you think uh, the Indian ecosystem, research ecosystem, or the outreach system? What all improvement we need, and what are the gaps uh, that we should uh, work? or fill in um so that we at least compete with these science giants we are doing good research I mean, we are doing good research uh, but india ka sheer numbers are uncomparable with anything in the yes. world which you are well aware of and i think we need to understand how that can be an opportunity mm -hmm. as well as a challenge mm -hmm. the same situation yes. with numbers we can't have that number of educational institutions we have to get into private mm -hmm. uh, sector in a very big way we can't have everybody getting everything because of the mm. sheer numbers again yes. but what we can do is we can make an environment for youngsters today who would not be worried about coming back to india mm. i came back to india with the resounding strength of uh, conviction that this is the place i want to be so there was success mm. outside of india cambridge oxford the rest of the world they are doing through the brand names are huge but our brand name will not be created unless we come back mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so i want to create a brand name here and the differences i saw between these two places the thing to improve there is something to improve and there is something to to feel proud of so the thing to improve first is that our students are so shy and so mm -hmm. under constantly undermining themselves ki nahi i'm good but not good enough mm -hmm. good enough bachche bahar hain but what i've seen is our phd students you know we do a phd in india only when we clear one of these national yes. examinations outside of india there is no such thing for a phd mm -hmm. as long as you can call me and i like you and i spoke with you and we have a conversation yes there will be an interview guys yeah but it is nothing compared to india doing a phd in mm -hmm. india in the leading institutions of india is the toughest mm -hmm. and if you clear that you are really up there in the world when you only have five seats or 10 seats our students don't know it they get those five or 10 seats and still feel ki main bahar chala jata to shayad isse better ho jata no it would be much because the thing you learn here in the face of all obstacles if you are able to do research here you can do it anywhere on the planet so that's the first thing confidence the second thing is the students in cambridge and oxford they are so comfortable and cool in their own in their own characters they are so at ease that every second day they will meet a nobel laureate and therefore they are calling you by first name and handing mm -hmm. yahan pe students are afraid they probably will never get to meet a nobel laureate or they probably will never get to showcase their work at an international mm -hmm. um, uh, platform which students outside of india are doing it all the time but they don't see it as an international platform for them it is a national platform it's a daily local mm -hmm. thing to do for our students it's not what i want is to have these mobility programs maybe someday and i think we already have in the government a lot of such options our phd students should be able to at least once during their phd mm -hmm. do an international uh, work presentation oral presentation yes. at least two posters mm -hmm. and within india because in india we are having many international mm -hmm. good yes, international yeah, conferences are happening in india yours at the yes, uh, bio curation i'm looking forward to that a lot of my cambridge students are coming mm -hmm. to india to attend that one our indian students we have to ensure as supervisors that our students attend at least two and attend me attend and present mm -hmm. at at least two mm -hmm. national or 
within the nation international conferences annually so that they feel confident mm. and that confidence once it comes oh we will we will be able to i think we can transform everything the thing we should be proud of is that outside of india funding is not as good as we have here we have very good funding we have very good infrastructure really? oh i cannot begin oh. to tell you how much mm. we have here but what i'm realizing now uh, india is also moving into a very this is a this right now is a changing a phase in india where research funding is moving from the government to the private sector that is necessary that is something that is new that was not there earlier all of indian research and indian scientific research was majority government funded whereas outside of india in these branded places in the major institutions in the world this is private funded or at least hugely private mm -hmm. funded we need to bring private funds into india but what india is doing unique which i find interesting is they are making sure that the private funds are not coming in for private mandates or mm. private preferences okay. the funding is going to come into any one of the nine national missions that that, that india has set up you want to do something in climate security mm. data security cyber security food security um you know come in and do mm. digital security come in and do in that the funds will come from the from the corporate sector but the funding is going to be here for researchers to work on the national mm. missions so that it's not that the private sector is funding me so i do what they want me to mm. do that india is ensuring right now is not happening it's such a fantastic place to be this is something that in most countries you will not find but our science our our young careers you know early career researchers and students are not there that for least all of the corp this is called csr funding the corporate social responsibility corporate social responsibility funds are something that the corporate has no say in their you know i am hnm so all of my research will be in you know making making clothes better or improving the quality of clothes that is your own research r and d your csr will go to social societal funds and that should be for something that the nation gains from or the public or the society gains from and those are the nine national missions and so they are putting these funds but in the last 11 12 15 years all of the csr funding in india was not coming to research it was going to technology bio incubator centers and even that was transformed the tbcs boomed if you notice in the last yes. decade right but that that happened because all of the tons of crores was being pumped into this mm. this 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 uh, whole incubation center paradigm shift and a lot of uh, incubation centers mm. came india went from startups 50 se 70000 aaye hain kitne ab ho gaye hain hamare but then two years ago the principal scientific advisors office during the pandemic they to the fed ki why is all the fund only going to startups and entrepreneurs what about our researchers why should all the research funding be only our mulla ki dot masjid tak bsd csi rdt scrb they said the cs the principal scientific advisors office said let's let the researchers use this fund also as therefore now for the first time in the last one year on the 75th independence yes. day manthan was announced the so manthan was announced manthan is the platform where if you have an idea put up top as a one page concept note put it into manthan if any corporate in the world is interested in it they'll pick it up they'll fund you for it if they want something done for for rural women or for uh, crop productivity or for digital literacy they put it into manthan your research you want to do it pick it up and you'll so it's a two way interaction between industry and academia and it's fully funded and then came the nrf which is a different story altogether so india is changing in a very interesting way but all these schemes are there but still the students they don't know about these of course, of course. so how to you know uh, give uh, the outreach or spread the outreach so that it's some course that all these things are available all these uh, schemes are available and if a researcher wants to translate his science to some product or uh, uh, some uh, type of startup this is the method all this road map is not very clear to the students so if somehow we have some little course one week course or something like that or uh, a particular uh, site that you go in that and you will find the list first of all students are not uh, very uh, encouraging to going to that site and reading over <laughs> these so how can they get to know that all these things are available in india and they can do they all, all have dream to go out for the post of and uh, when we see the international students coming here to uh, to do so research uh, there are two things here one is that as we go into the new gen you know gen what are they called gen next 
the current Gen Z. So this generation has a very small attention span. And the moment you create a booklet or a brochure for them to get uh, gyan, they're going to just put it in the trash can. So the way to connect to the Gen Z with the two minute attention span or the 30 second attention span is to probably make shorts or reels. You know, sorry time Insta pay shorts or reels, they grow there, but none of us are creating these media things. So that's, we have started. And start that I, to, I think we can include. So I think it is very important to first get to them in the way mm -hmm. they need us to get. They are not Facebook people. They are not Twitter people. They may be, but they're not. That's one thing. The other thing is, Students really do, are you are right, they are not aware and ignorance is not bliss. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they are not aware does not mean these opportunities are not there. They have to be aware and we have to help them in becoming aware. And this distance is also partly because I think India is changing. As I mm -hmm. said, all of these changes are happening now. Mm -hmm. And so therefore it makes sense for us to have this kind of conversation mm -hmm. more often, mm -hmm. not just with each other, maybe with students mm -hmm. also and tell them what kind of opportunities mm -hmm. are. The government is making, and so there was this discussion that happened some time back that uh, there are so many opportunities in so many places. And one person, even a scientist, would not know kaun kaun se grant applications mm -hmm. available. Hai. So therefore, again, Manthan again becomes the one-stop shop where all opportunities, mm -hmm. all possibilities are in one place. But for that, the Principal Scientific Advisors Office has to get in touch with all the ministries mm -hmm. so that all opportunities are in one place. They are trying it. My current internal news mm -hmm. from sources that cannot be named <laughs> is that um, ho raha hai, mm -hmm. or better hoga. But I think each one of us has to have that drop in the ocean yes. and do whatever little we yeah. can to make so God is going to contribute to greater awareness of, of yes. opportunities. Uh, considering the advancements in AI and big data, how do you see they can uh, play a role uh, in uh, unraveling the new uh, networks or engineering crops for the future? AI? Um, as of now, AI is already in our lives. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do from buying, communicating, social media has AI within it. But for some reason, the Indian, our world wise, I want to speak only for India right now, the Indian agri research community, the Indian agri technology sector, agri tech has taken an AI. They are doing AI and precision agriculture mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. But the research community, you know, us as scientists, we have not moved out of our boxes mm -hmm. of traditional conventional research methods to use AI or the power of AI mm -hmm. as of yet. Uh, the reason again is the convention we are brought up with, the, our, you know, what we've learned and our strengths are our strengths. But I think you have to change with times mm -hmm. and there again it's not just students that we need to change the mindsets on, mm -hmm. it is also very senior scientists and vice chancellors yes. and heads of governance also mm -hmm. who need to change the way they think about bringing AI at least to biology. Mm -hmm. Some of us in India, you know, couple of us in the computational biology community, sub-community, mm -hmm. are aware of how important this is. We have begun little things in our own ways, but not all of us have been able to make change. I'm very, I consider myself extremely fortunate that I'm at NIPGR, where my director, even though she's not an AI guy, she called me and said, you've got to set up the AI cloud or an cluster for anybody in plant sciences in India to do it here. Mm -hmm. And that made me set this National Plant Computational Biology mm -hmm. and Bioinformatics Facility up that was, mm -hmm. that was inaugurated last week. Through the NBCBBF, our aim is to enable AI for computer vision, AI for genomics, mm -hmm. AI for textual data, AI over NLP, AI over structure. Mm -hmm. All of this can now be done at NIPGR. And because we are a national facility, it is also open for anybody in India to start it out. But my first job is to let people know that we exist and we are here in case you want to do this. So that is where I think the gap is between setting up something, starting something with the right idea, with the right support and the right infrastructure, and then getting people to actually use it. So maybe through this first yes. podcast that I'm putting sure. together, the first interview I've had within three days of setting up the facility, um, maybe January 1st, maybe 2024 should be the year in which we, so we are planning the same thing. We are planning some events and some workshops, mm -hmm. which reminds me that there is this portal called the I Got portal, mm -hmm. which is suddenly now becoming a very important portal of the government where all sorts of courses are available. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn about AI, machine learning, or pick up something new, mm -hmm. there are courses, short mm -hmm. courses there that you could learn. And this is for students again. I'm just telling you as an answer to your last question. But we are going to start our own 
trainings in, in high performance computing, parallel computing, machine learning, using R and Python and coding for biologists, not for the computer mm -hmm. scientists, obviously. So this is for biologists and biologists need to know how to do data science, the gene set enrichment analysis. So we have a full calendar of what we are going to train people in. And what I want, maybe with your help, you know, we could have a, a national training facility mm -hmm. for facilitation yes. where people or students would know, students mm -hmm. you know, people, other people would know. So we once did this uh, program called We Vidya. Mm -hmm. We Vidya was a number naam tha for, you know, women, getting women to learn virtually become experts mm -hmm. in AI and data science. And I was expecting to have students join me. Mm -hmm. And guess what happened? Vice chancellors of universities, heads of statistics departments of universities, mm -hmm. women, they wrote to me and they said, Tumhe pata hai ki humne jo apni padhai ki thi, jo hum padha rahe Wo 1980s or 1990s ke books the. Aaj ki date pe jo, aaj ki date pe students padh rahe hain, aur janna chahte hain, that we are not in a position to train. And so I want to learn. And they came and joined me mm -hmm. and learned with me over four days. So we have a four or five day course that we do one go for statistics and for uh, learning R and data science. They took this course and they loved it. And they said, let's just have, we want, and they've been writing to me, where's the calendar? We want mm -hmm. to do more courses. I didn't have a calendar because we didn't have the facility. Mm -hmm. Now we have the facility. We are setting up the HRD cell at NIPGR also. And I think we should connect across yes. these uh, different institutions sure. like yours and ours to do these things together as satellite events around major conferences. Does anybody want to learn uh, course statistics? Mm -hmm. do, do, do they want to do it in two days? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a crash course because we have people who can mm -hmm. get it done. Does anybody want to pick up network analysis because we are building networks all the time? Yes, you can do it. Does anybody want to do AI? Just try it out. Dip your fingers. Mm -hmm. AI over NLP, we've put it on a Google Colab notebook. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have the internet and a laptop or a QR code scanner, you can do, you can run our code just by clicking. Mm -hmm. So these are things, you know, these are like shots and reels that like equivalent mm -hmm. that we are creating in the lab so that everybody, anybody who's interested mm -hmm. can do it. So now we've got the infrastructure. We need to reach out to people. So, today so is uh, how this facility will support the research community? The uh, NBCBBF? They, they can access it? Yes, the NBCBBF is meant to be a facility for all plant biologists okay. in the country to be able to do not just genomics and transcriptomics, but also metabolomics, as well as AI, as well as data science of any kind. And so therefore, what we have is currently the basic set of about 150, 170 software that is there on these, um, on our GPU enabled servers. That's why I keep calling them an AI box. But we have more than one TB RAM on multiple, so a total of six TB RAM is there because plant genomes, unlike animal genomes, are huge and they undergo polyploidy. And assembling these genomes to ve a de novo mostly can require what we have seen in the lab, what I have seen myself is at least 1200 gigs of RAM. And most of our computers or servers are not capable of handling that. So many people across different organizations get stuck at that point, mm -hmm. that step doesn't complete. And so they come back to think, okay, let's just do the exome sequence, let's just do the transcriptome sequence. We find ways because research doesn't stop. But to make an enabling environment where any youngster would say, yes, I can handle this huge genome also because there is the NPCBBF. Mm -hmm. So we have that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and borrow the the, the format that you have at the IBDC mm -hmm. where you have a form that people fill and they become, you know, that way we have a, a kind of um, idea about who wants to access and what they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. Also, we are able to report to our funders. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we are doing so much wider work. Mm -hmm. So I want to have some inputs from you on that one. Mm -hmm. And I think you're doing a good job there already. And so therefore, together, we can, we can actually make, so this is going to be available. Mm -hmm. In the first instance, we're going to make it available to every single user of NIPGR. The cloud, particularly, okay. I want people's phones, tablets, computers, and desktops synced in perfect, perfect unison. So, you know, I'm walking in the corridor, I get an email, that is Aaj Ke Program Ka, Program mm -hmm. Schedule. I want to make a change to it, phone pay nature, I come back to my desktop, I have to reopen my email. But with the cloud now, I don't have to reopen my email. The, the file that I downloaded on my phone mm -hmm. has already synced to my desktop, mm -hmm. already synced to my students, uh, the region mm -hmm. that I've chosen. So it is accessible from any device that is on the LDAP or on the LAN of the NIBGR. Yeah. So as long as I'm in the institute, I'm completely synced because of the cloud. So that is an additional facility that I got that I yes. copied from Cambridge. So I think there is a lot of borrowing, stealing and copying that we should do about with role models and role models may not just be people, mm -hmm. but organizations and facilities. 
And so I do that all the time. I'm constantly borrowing and stealing and making things better where I can. That is how the ecosystem evolved or advanced. So ma'am, your recent breakthrough work in determining the label free Poland viability. Yes, we did that. Yes, we're absolutely right. So ma'am, how this Poland free viability has been done and uh, can you please uh, tell us about more about so this is very interesting because last week we presented it at the Johnny Nee Center mm -hmm. and uh, a month ago my students went to United Nations mm -hmm. and showed this as the first time in the last 75 years uh, botanists what they do with pollen mm -hmm. is that they put some stain on it yes. and they visualize the mm -hmm. so that that's called labeled stained mm -hmm. uh, uh, analysis but that kills the pollen. Once you put the stain, you can't use it. Even though you know it was there was 70% viability in there, you can't use it. What we have done, and we have not done it, I was basically listening to a lecture, and this is another reason why you should go out of your field and listen to lectures outside of. So if this happened in the pandemic, I have to do that disclaimer, I wouldn't have gone otherwise. The pandemic was there, the meeting was online, and I attended it. And there is this, this, this optical physicist talking about a made in India invention, a microscope that he has invented in India. He also left GE and all major international groups mm -hmm. to come back to India, he invented this microscope. And then he got stuck with hospitals. He came up with a way to identify cancer cells mm -hmm. and sickle cell anemic uh, RBCs. Mm -hmm. And yet he couldn't, so they got stuck in hospital red tape that, you know, how would you use this data? How would you, he just wanted to test his microscope, how well it works. And I was listening and I wrote a question. I said, ah, you with some mehnat karke human cells pe kaam karo. Come and, you know, take a look at plant cells. You don't have any red tape with plant cells. He actually responded and he said, kaun se plant cell they came with? And at that time, I was very much interested in, uh, because I have been an invasion biologist, so I look at invasive species and I'm concerned with the fact that invasive species are polyploid. And their polyploidy prevents people from, uh, you know, understanding what all has happened inside the mm -hmm. genome or to even sequence. People are afraid to sequence mm -hmm. uh, invasive genomes because they're huge. Yes. And what we felt was some papers in, a, um, in, in the US, again, most work in the US, they say that ploidy can impact pollen viability and therefore it may be able to back predict uh, invasivity or the extent of invasivity with the extent of pollen viability. Mm -hmm. And because I'm not a botanist, what is, I mean, I used to be, but I'm now a data scientist. So I said, if we could look at pollen somehow mm. and maybe find something that we don't expect to find there. So I said, will you look at pollen? He said, kiska pollen, kaisa hota hai, kya hota hai? I said, it's a single cell and it's got life. It's the seed to life and you will enjoy looking at it. So he then... We joined hands across optical physics and botany, and my students were very happy to leave the computer for a day and prepare these um, these slides with pollen. And we discovered that viability, which for which we have to stay in, his DHM, because it's a holograph microscope, mm. because it uses only wave interference, so the wave theory, in the extent to which through a material, when light passes, if it is free air or vacuum, mm. light will pass straight, but if there's something there, it will bend a little bit. He measures that bending, mm. and that bending can be so tiny, so small, so minuscule as maybe 10 to the minus 15 femtoseconds, and there is no device on the planet mm. that can measure femtoseconds of time. It hasn't been made up till to date, but what he does mm. is a trick. He says, I can measure the femtoseconds, but I can measure the difference in the straight line. So he takes the beam, he splits it, one side is vacuum, one side is through the pollen, and he measures the difference. The difference is not femto to zero, it's just femto by femto difference. So when he measures the difference, he knows what is there in the cell. And when this light wave passed, when he looked at the difference between the viable and the inviolable pollen, we had no need to label, we discovered a statistical difference in the populations of viable and inviolable pollen. And we were like, oh my God, it means any interesting idea. And you know, you know, in 70 years, someone has seen the first time the pollen viability, which has seen the same steam. He says, why can't you see it? I said, of course, we will have germination, but how many will we have germination? So then we published it in content priority. That's when Johnny Nees invited us. And this device that he has, what he said, what was more interesting was, he went to listen to a lecture of a mechanical engineer somewhere else who was saying, if you have some interesting cells, then I can sort it out. So he came back to me and I said, how will it be useful to farmers to know that, you know, through a microscope, some of my pollen, even though they are not staying, some pollen are viable, others are not. He says, what if we put a cell sorter there? The moment mm -hmm. you see the pollen, um, 
you make a decision about the foreign being viable, mm -hmm. they'll go into one direction, the immobile ones will go into different, and you have an append of or a solution where you have only 100% viable polling. And the moment you get that, you have transformed seed banking for mm -hmm. India, you have transformed plant breeding, crop breeding, mm -hmm. you've transformed the way we talk about certain species being mm -hmm. not so amenable to being grown here or grown there. And we've completely transformed the whole story, but sorting ho mm -hmm. So now what we are doing is we are building okay. a device, that a portable we just start to our bill. So that's why it's a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. But the excitement in all of us, in this mechanical engineer, working with a physicist, working with a plant biologist, mm -hmm. and all of us then thinking, ki microscopes are images are they which AI mm -hmm. So now we are doing AI over imaging mm -hmm. with the pollen mm -hmm. data. We also want to make an educational tool so that anybody in the world can now start to understand pollen with these different features that come and these mm -hmm. are mathematical mm -hmm. features to do deep learning on. In addition, we are building a device that is portable so mm -hmm. it can go to the farmers and farmers can put a drop of flower say mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or separate mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or it could be used by farming industry. I'm interested in research, mm -hmm. but the kind of possibilities now yes. are mm -hmm. immense and I'm going to be presenting it at the Young University of the meeting mm -hmm. next month, also at ISA Kolkata. Yeah. I hope students find it interesting because it's a lesson on how meeting mm -hmm. each other. You know, it's so important to get out of and know, not just listen to botany talks or, or just plant biology or just data science. Mm -hmm. So this is a true example of, of is it available? Uh, yes, yes, the DHM. How, how big is this uh, Currently, the current DHM mm -hmm. is only one in India. It's sitting in IIT Delhi. You can use it, but it is as big as like Mira printer, Tumare Pichu, right? So it's the size of this printer. But what we want to do is make it half the size and smaller, mm -hmm. make it portable. I have already, because our director, our SAC committee was so impressed and they said, okay, yes, some interesting work is going on. They have agreed to bring or buy one for um, mm -hmm. NIPGR. Once it comes to NIPGR, I want more plant biologists to use that DHL for plants also or dedicatedly. Mm -hmm. And then we can start doing more AI and more data collection on the features that we get from the pollen from different plants. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. very so much of it. time in uh, looking uh, at the pollen viability. Isn't it? Isn't it? If, if it is, uh, if maybe uh, pollen viability is a very key trait yes. for most of the stress Yes, uh, for stress trait. associated. Yes. So research, well, this is, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. Now, pollen viable, why is it? Is it the sugar content? It is the protein content? Especially in the stress. Huh? So we can find that from so the mathematical yes. features. So if you do data mm -hmm. science or deep neural networks on the pollen data, that gives me the thousands of cultivars. Mind boggling yes. possibilities. So okay. yeah. You can, uh, you know, screen thousands of cultivars based on each other. Currently, each other. Great. So throughout your scientific journey, what all challenges uh, you have faced and how they uh, transformed into opportunities to, uh, towards your career? The first challenge that I faced, as I told you, was during my school days when I felt that why everybody has to go in this nadi ki sab ja rahe to mehdi bhehte bhi chala jau and I tried to get out of it and it worked for me. The second challenge was well, when I had to make a decision about going for a postdoc after after PhD, a good PhD. I had more than seven or ten papers. Mm -hmm. And it was that if you want to be successful in your scientific career, don't stay in India. Mm -hmm. Go out. Today I find PhD students constantly worrying about going out foreign jana, foreign jana. Mm -hmm. The thing is that we have removed international boundaries so perfectly between different nations. Everything happening everywhere is available to you at your fingertips. This is 2023. Mm -hmm. There is no need to physically pedal chalke nahi jana to find that. Thing. And but in those days that was there, and I still said, why? You know, can it stand without? And I had a support structure in my supervisor, in my friends, in my family, who said, Ki, it might be a big risk that you're taking, but if you want to stay back in India, stay back in India. I chose to stay back in India, and by God's grace, things have worked out for me for having stayed back in India. And then, of course, I got an opportunity after 10 years, I did feel that I've been stagnant and I'm not. That was another stage in my life and I was suddenly feeling, some people call it post, um, what is that term? Post maternal, I don't know, you have babies and you suddenly go into some kind of uh, 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 discussion mode. That wasn't there. My, my two kids have actually, they made me, I was born as a mom. Mm -hmm. They were not born to me. I was born to them. Yes. And it is crazy, that treasure. So that was fantastic. And the Indian government has more chutti than a lot of other countries. So therefore, I'm very happy to be here because I got a long chutti to be with them. But the stagnation came from somewhere else. It came from, it came from 
feeling somewhere, and I'm a traveler, it came from feeling that I'm not traveling enough, or I'm not seeing the world, or I'm not, I've missed out on something. And that curiosity that was within me was a big challenge because at that time, leaving a four-year-old child or a six-year-old child and both super dependent on me, you know, and I, I thought that I could stay here because it was hugely successful. But if I stayed here, then maybe someday I would blame my kids for for uh, being the reason I didn't go. And maybe they would not feel good about it. But that was not the main point. The point was I had to see what it is that the world says about international science. Mm. Why is it so? And you have to know it in the top mm. location in the world. And my opportunity did came from in Cambridge. There were five people who were selected for this program. I was the only woman on the program. And to have stayed back at that time would have meant you know, to fall into all the tropes that you had. So I did it to again prove something, not to the world, to do myself, that I can do it. But of course, the thing was that when you go abroad, um, you also, you know, there was used to be a very good um, mentor I had many years ago, Professor Sushil Kumar, late Professor Sushil Kumar. Oh my God, he was the one who insisted the awards get applied. But he got me all my awards. And then I, once he passed away, I made up my mind, he up koi award mujhe nahi chahiye. But he's after that But but once he, uh, you know, so he said, Ki, Gitanji, kabhi to bahar jana hai, kyunki na, hame protein generate karna hota. So what is protein? <laughs> he said, see, outside India, you get to earn more. And in India, you are just in the regular system. But what I discovered was that cost of living is as high everywhere. India is not particularly less expensive. You know, that was again the previous millennium. Maybe that was the story in our previous generation. In our generation, it's exactly the same. You shop an MS outside of India and MS within India, and you, it's the same cost exactly. So I found that there is no difference in that sense, but it gave me a freedom in my mind independently. Like Shah Rukh Khan says, mm-hmm. so I have, uh, I have that Shah Rukh is my, 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 uh, yeah, my, my biggest role model. And so Sharon said this should be done. I made up my mind that I'm going to be able to do it. So I was independent. I have my own car and I have my own uh, 500 rupees always. Um, and so therefore, I went for the Cambridge thing. That was a big challenge mm-hmm. because the family and friends felt that, um, you know, gee, you are a curious person. You are an impulsive person. But are you sure you want to just leave everything mm-hmm. and go away? Uh, so I kept coming back. For every birthday, for every event, I would come back. And so I ended up spending more money than earning more money on that program. So there was no protein except for loss of protein. But it was fantastic from the point of view of having learned how the world works and discovering that we have the same problems. Mm -hmm. There also women are invisible. There also funding is very difficult. Silver platter pe free mein milte bahar tumko itni, itni paapar milne hai to get a PhD student and to find funds for postdocs here in India. Life is so much easier. I can get interns, I'm best interns from the best academies. And I'm part of a lot of things where, which is not a bit possible outside. And yet we see the brand names and success that is outside, which means that people take their stride, the obstacles in their stride. So those five years for me at Cambridge were transformative. It was a huge challenge. And sometimes I felt and that guilt will forever be there. So I used to come back with these major gifts for my children. And my children once came from school and said, Mama, this bag or pencil box is a rocket science type. Ka. I said, why? Teachers are not going to do it. Our friends look at it and then we don't feel mm-hmm. good that they don't have it. Mm-hmm. So I got a big shock in that because you know what we do for our children yes. is what we don't have. I always wanted a big pencil box of that color and with that sharpener and everything and lots of other rocket science in it. I didn't have it. And so I brought it for my kids and they said, we don't want it. And so they, I think my children, therefore, are our children of this generation. They are not so much into flaunting what they mm-hmm. have. They are more into using things. Mm-hmm. And they taught me a lesson or two about feeling guilty and trying to compensate. A lot of us compensate mm-hmm. our guilt by the toffee dalwala, ek ki jaga. So I had to curb that. And that was another personal challenge in curbing that idea of going out of my way to make somebody feel more compensated for what I did. What I did was not wrong. Why should I compensate for Mm -hmm. it? So my kids, um, six year old, 
and seven year old at that time gave me that impression ki what are you doing is good we enjoy already saying that mama works at cambridge mm-hmm. and mama travels all the time <laughs> so you don't have to or uh, they are very happy because homework karane ke liye main yahan hi baithi na constantly mm-hmm. so i'm not scolding them so much they are quite happy that i travel now they ask ki kab jaogi kab wapas ja rahi ho please kabhi to hame free karo and i'm like main kahin nahi ja rahi hu aur main yahi baithi hu aur aaj hi homework khatam hoga so that's my challenge that these are things publishing was an issue when i first came within i had help um, professor kasturi that uh, gave me my first um, uh, you know we had done work together and you always do work with people mm-hmm. and communicate uh, she said you're going to be the communicating author mm-hmm. now that's in india a very unique place to be you're not usually when you have somebody very senior with you by default junior scientists are not considered as communicators but she taught me a lesson then in the first few years so we got a we got a jdc at that time that was my first after coming here and then i got an nar and then a couple of other good papers and i was a communicating author and as a fresh phd student i was not in a, i would have any day said ki ha you communicate i'm happy to do all the work she said no you own your work in anjali mm. and so that was another mental block mm. that i Uh, want to be able to give to somebody shekhar mande was my phd viva examiner mm-hmm. and the day he examined my viva congratulated me and said ab to mujhe sir nahi bologi aaj se that differences come so please call me by my name and since then shekhar and i are such great and he gave me the envelope and he said kabhi kisi ko batana mat but your envelope on radium ka jaake kisi ko do kisi bacche ko jisko zarurat hai main phd ke liye nahi leta i learned that and i never you know uh, I try also that if I get a packet of honorarium, I can give it back. But today, there are no packets. Today, there is no such system. You know, you do online, and there is no. But uh, Shikhar taught me some very interesting things. So many of these people helped me understand what it is that you can do to overcome the doubts that you have. I've had doubts. I still do with myself. And things may work. Some things fail. Mm-hmm. I've talked to you about maybe three things that are successful. There are thirty that have failed also, which we will never mm-hmm. talk about. I think we should have conversations about where we have failed, mm-hmm. and I feel I have failed in my parenthood to some extent. Mm-hmm. But that's a personal feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of my friends may not agree there. My children may not agree there. But I know that I'm As mind to this. You know, so there are these these little failures it's that you must really have to come. But if you're not going, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to do anything. So these failures and these obstacles, I think, are part of mm-hmm. part of life. So you have to accept them, mm-hmm. and you have to. move on so ma'am how do you see your family support throughout your journey my family support my mother in law runs the house i don't know chini chai kahan par hai because she is the one who runs it the maid is the one who uh, you know who makes my nimbu pani the main moment i get home so my family support the mali is the one who keeps madam ko jo pasand hai wahi cheez ugega kitchen garden mein the mali make sure about that the driver takes care that the children come from school on the right time and they go so i have you know we've set up and we do it ourselves mm-hmm. to have a, an infrastructure just like at work mm-hmm. i think the infrastructure at work at, at home is also equally important mm-hmm. i would not have been where i am today during my studies without my parents who always maybe because dad was an uh, is a former army officer um and mom she was a house wife i mean i should be a homemaker all her life but the day we all went to college and finished things she learned advocacy and is an advocate and works for social good she catches hold of people maid ko kabhi problem ho gaya driver ko kabhi problem ho gaya unko help karana gaon mein kisi ko kuch ho raha hai crisis ho raha hai sabke sath kasht hai my mom goes out and takes care of that kasht by doing these you know doing this this coat ka chehri ke chakkar which i'm like mama please can you let go she said i have to do something with my life should mm-hmm. i just be watching netflix should i just be watching tv mm-hmm. she does watch a lot of tv but she does a lot of good stuff which is social good and that made me believe that see she she is from the conventional uh, space where a wife or a woman is successful if she brings up good children nicely if her husband is successful and retires happily and her house is good looking which all my house was and is but my mom still is an advocate and i'm most proud about that that she is now you know i have called up told her to help my friends my own friends who needed some help with legal mm-hmm. uh, issues my mother helps them and she just helps them out of this 
And so I believe that this uh, this thing, my dad, oh my goodness, there used to be school teachers who used to call Gitanjali ke daily nai nai boyfriends bante rehte hain. Daily ladko ke saath bhulti hai. Kam se kam back benchers ke saath to usko bolo ki Gitanjali beta, aap topper ho class ki. Aapko ek image maintain karna hai. Aap ye back benchers ke saath nahi ghum kar sakte. So my dad came home, he's senior army officer. He said, Jee, listen, call the boys home, meet them at home. Teachers ke saamne mat mila kar. And I said, dad, uh, he said, teachers ke saamne mat mila kar. Wo mujhe bolte hai, mujhe sunna padta hai. फिर ऐसे अच्छा टीचर से सामने नहीं मिलूंगी पर फिर हम एक बर्थडे पे लेके जाओगे यहाँ ले जाओगे पिक्चर दिखाओगे पापा से जो करना है कल तुम लेकिन यू नो डोंट लेट पीपल से अबाउट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड दैट फ्रीडम दैट कॉन्फिडेंस दैट ही हैड इन मी दैट ही वुड यू नो it's not what people say that impacted him i see a lot of parents pushing their children into this thing you have to be something for the community my dad always told me be whatever you want to be and go out and feel as you want to and i will help you and never feel under confident never do anything bhag ke dar ke ya kisi ke dar se you should know that your parents are with you and i always did and so i've had the best of friends forever and that was one thing so my dad and mom ghar of course mera totally meri mother in law ka di mom ke bina jeevan possible nahi hai unko pata hai kya kahan pe rakha hai kaise hoga and she has gone to the village for the winter she goes to the village but baaki time bachcho ko kaun khana khilata hai bachche kaise theek rehte hain bachcho ki uniform kaise saaf rehti hai ye mujhe nahi pata hai ye my mother in law and grand mother in law we are we live four generations together mm. so when we got married my husband said tere ko jahan ghumna hai duniya mein to ghum but you know i'm going to be with my i have my mom i have my grandparents and we are going to be together so i said yeah yeah i'll come into the family i'm very happy to come you know to be part of the whole thing so we've got this huge uh, four generation from bachche to great grandmother and malayali bolte hain hindi bolte hain english bolte hain sab bolte hain so we are very 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 uh, big joint family from that angle but it's it's been brilliant because mm. the children get an exposure to how the great grandmother thinks and how the mother is so loud but the great grandmother is so much tehrab that term tehrab jo mere paas kabhi nahi hai wo meri grandmother in law mein hai and nani saas jo meri hai by god she's a she's something and she will say acha subah office ja rahi hai aaj to pata nahi pehna hua and then i will say ki uh, i will say mujhe she iske saath zara na wo kurti nehru kurti zara smart hai uske upar dupatta mujhe bahut bol lag raha hai nahi nahi pehen le koi baat nahi so then she will always aaj bindi nahi lagayi aaj saali nahi pehni she will do it my mother in law is so cool she's like super cool she says koi baat nahi ye theek hai aa jati hai na time pe ghar pe khate rehti hai bachche theek hai then my grandmother in law says ha wo to hai theek hai so then she's and i took them both to cambridge so my grandmother 80 year old comes to cambridge in this dining hall where all the dons of cambridge are eating their dinner with 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 six course meals and she sits quietly and watches everyone she's not under confident she watches everybody and then she follows them and takes thoda thoda and eats mm. more and then she says ki tu mujhe lander leke aa gayi matlab in her she has seen mm. the partition she has seen she was there when india was not mm. uh, when colonials were still there and when i took her to cambridge and made her have uh, a meal there and spend we spent mm. a complete summer eat summer while my lectureship was on they were there but but during that summer she felt so cool about my mother in law because she's vegetarian she would say ki are kya khaye kya nahi khaye but my grandmother would say prawns hai fish hai jo bhi hai sab sab kha sakte hain she is omnivorous mm-hmm. i didn't know this about her there's there's so much about your grands that you don't know which you get to know if you give them the freedom to run your your life and when they run it and you discover them mm-hmm. i think that's a different story for a different podcast yes. but that's been they've been amazing but also the institute because i live on campus you see women who travel a long distance mm-hmm. between home and office i feel that also takes away something from them yes. some of my friends enjoy it because they say ki i can drive but i find the fact that i can go home lunch be in a day mm-hmm. shaam ki chai ke liye it it has it has given me a kind of a kind of um, mm. a freedom in the mind that is maybe maybe reflecting in my work and my peace and my and my my results great does that make sense yes yes sure and especially for uh, all those women who sometimes feel ke possible nahi ho payega तो उनको अब पता होना चाहिए कि अगर फैमिली सपोर्ट है सब पॉसिबल हो जाएगा बट जॉइंट फैमिली इज अ ब्लेसिंग join family has yes. been a blessing for me but to some extent you have to make sure to give them the freedom mm-hmm. to say ki mummy aap chalao na ghar you should mm-hmm. i i don't try to say ki nahi mujhe kuch so mm-hmm. there is a there is a unique balance. balance in there very, especially very in the indian context 
But if you let the in-laws think ki, mm-hmm. Aray, hum run kar rahe show. Oh, they do such a great, mm-hmm. you know, they love it. They they own you. Mm-hmm. And I love that they own me. And I, uh, sometimes I, I, we joke about it. Bohut jokes amare ghar pe bohut hote hai. Aur main bilkul jokes ka mm-hmm. bohu. Madhav, I'm a typical uh, joke receiver. And bache bhi mera bohut mazak raat hai. Ki mama bohut, bohut maze karti hai. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, you have to have that balance where you let another person feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. In, in having a life together. And so they give me my comfort to do whatever I want to do outside of the house. And I give them the freedom to do whatever they want to do and make the rules inside the house and we manage it. You know, that's a unique great stream. Not oh, easy, but awesome. uh, hey, which, which is, is a challenge. Yeah. Hey, joint family is always a blessing. We, yeah. we also have a joint family. So the children grow yes, better. Yeah. better yes. I think they grow up better because I can't teach them. Ma'am, what uh, is your advice or tips that you would like to give it to the uh, younger generation aspiring scientists or uh, early career researchers? I think there are two things. One is that there is no ladder, which I have said before. There's no straight ladder. Consider life and your career of maze. You have to go left, right and find a way. It's more like a wo bacho ko jahan bachpan mein le jate na khelne ke liye jahan wo ha ha it's more like a uh, like a different routes to climb some children do climbing and they climb not just seedhe upar but they climb left right jahan rasta mil gaya wahan chal pade kabhi tangent nikal liya so think about finding solutions little solutions little detours to from the main path can still keep you on the main path but that they can help you Second, I find that a lot of people, girls particularly, mm. constantly apologize. Sorry, my sister was up here. Sorry, I'm late today. Sorry, I didn't call you. Mm. Sorry, who should say it? Stop saying sorry and stop apologizing. You know, stop feeling. Uh, just stop saying sorry is one thing I want to say to people. That's that's I think very important. You begin by appreciating yourself, and only then everything will fall into place. Is my is my view. That's Especially that. for uh, women, ma'am, uh, we see a lot of participation of uh, women candidate candidates in PhD programs, in MSc port programs. But we men see the top tiers. There are very less representation of women. That hey, exactly hey. happens, and what? And this is not in, in not just in India. It is in. Every country, maybe. Of course, it is an Asian country. Of course, it is. I mean, I'm just coming back from Kodeta, and my students are journey from United Nations. Same story everywhere. Mm-hmm. The truth is, yeah, whether you like it or not, women are 50 percent of the population. But we have been brought up for ages and ages mm-hmm. to think of ourselves as a minority. Mm-hmm. We are not a minority, but we've been told and confirmed and. made believe that we are a minority mm-hmm. and what is the unique thing about a minority to kuba that students are sabse zyada class mein ladkiyan hain mm-hmm. toppers bhi sari ladkiyan mm-hmm. hain lekin minority minority bolte hain women kahan se aa jati hain pehle to religious minorities aayenge fir caste minorities fir women ka naam aa jata hai kyunki unless you and i think this is a patriarchal thing and i, I may be wrong mm-hmm. and you may think about whether you want to put this out or not but i think the thing about a minority the most usp of a minority is that minorities are told ki aap itna mushkil hai na aapke liye aage badhna ki shayad aap aage badh pao par shayad aap ikloti ho apne group mein jo aage badh pao and so women will always be the only people so they have been brought up to think ki ek dusre se compete karke hi hum aage badh sakte hain ek saath sare nahi badh sakte a meeting and organization can have 10 men 100 men and they will not feel this thing with each other but if there are two women also they will immediately feel um, everybody will feel acha ye do inke bare kya special hai kya nahi hai what i'm trying to say is that women have been made to believe that we are a minority even though factually we are not and because of that minority cons- c- c- um, conviction we have we have become anti to each other because that is something minorities do minorities fight among themselves so that they can survive and that survival instinct makes them do this and i find women not helping it so i think it's not about men it's a lot of people say that you know women you can bring women up by somehow making them compete with men or no i think it's about holding each other's hand being for each other doing things together making sure that i'm not the only woman in the room in this room i'm not the only woman on the table i'm not the only woman in the mm-hmm. committee insisting that other women have to come in i i make it a point and i make it a thing jab tak i rub it into people's faces ki kya ho raha hai flyer pe where are the women ek ki shakal laga ke tumko gender balance mil gaya kya aise nahi milega so we have to fight to with you know within ourselves to make sure that you are not the only woman in the room and if you are the only woman in the room something is wrong with the system mm-hmm. that is one thing 
The other thing why you see that all these girls uh, become a minority because in the jobs, there are not enough girls who've got the jobs or women who've got the jobs. And that is because less, that has not got to do with our minority status, but the fact that we choose at some point to undermine ourselves. Yes. The woman in a in a pair, in a couple, will always be the first one to say, ki, Chalo, main abhi apna career thoda slow kar leti. Chalo, abhi bacho ka caregiving main kar leti. Chalo, abhi main thode din ke liye break le leti. Chalo, abhi main kuch easy job le leti. Mm -hmm. And so, women will actively consider, even though as many options might be there to them, they will feel ki, I'm not that guilty mm -hmm. is there. I'll not be a good enough mother if I go to Cambridge. Mm -hmm. I will not be a good enough mother if I travel too mm -hmm. much. I will not be a good enough mother if I speak loud or a good enough woman if I speak mm -hmm. loud. This bimari of, you know, bachpan se again being told good girls are not heard but only visible. So good girls do not speak. Why good girls should not speak? Why you should not speak? Only men should speak. So girls after good girls should speak and speak loudly and make themselves heard. Good girls should make friends with other girls and bring them up also. And I think most importantly at some point he bought Mushkil to change that mindset because a woman will always undermine herself. I mean both pushish ye nahi ho sakta ki you tell the woman ki no you you go out and Tell everybody that I will take this job, I will work 24-7, I will travel and do whatever is required. They will say, nay, I can manage without doing that. Because at some point they know that the other person or the guy or the father or the mm. male will not take that leap of, mm. will, will, come on, it's not expected of them. It is expected of me, the mm. And they find it easier. Yes. And the women who make their husbands do it are also not very, you know, I find that they are stigmatized. Mm. The woman who will say, Ki, nahi, tum apna job chodo, mere liyo, yahan uh, Some men are so strong, they actually do that mm -hmm. and they help the women. But the society has not yet learned to appreciate that. They have said, oh, she oh, is such a dominatrix, huh? <laughs> she gets this done and she gets here, he's head pecked and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's again the minority mentality, which is why. It is not easy to change this. Now, how many government interventions are you doing? How many people are talking about it? The girl will always say, I will undermine you. And I will say, 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 I so I want every girl, everybody who's listening to me today, pick up data science, learn AI, become an AI expert, and tomorrow, mm -hmm. sitting in your home, being able to undermine, just say, I don't do anything, just 5 million in my bank, but I don't do anything else, I don't do anything else, do that, but change it there. Let's mm -hmm. do it in an, if yes. women like to be undermined, be an underminer, learn data science, and trash the world. I don't know, they'll come over it. Maybe that is the solution to all of this. Isn't it? Oh, for the next day, let's see. So my last question, what exciting direction uh, do you now envision for your research list and how do you foresee the broader implications of your work in years to come? What all we can expect from your lab? Oh, that's, um, I, I think I've already, um, I have talked about two or three interesting things that have been happening in the lab. But of course, I've also talked about how I'm curious and I'm constantly wanting to evolve. Um, some years ago, I watched the movie Avatar. I don't know if you've watched it, but I was completely uh, thrilled with the idea that a planet is communicating with itself mm -hmm. and uh, it is happening through roots of certain mm -hmm. species. And what has happened is within, uh, with, on our planet, that was about another mm -hmm. planet, and this is in our world on our planet, apparently it has been shown that forests have networks, yes. underground yes. networks of fungal and root mm. hyphae that can span kilometers and kilometers. And this this kind of a network sustains life in mm. very large ecosystems and communication between ecosystems. And from a research point of view, how do you measure this life or this invisible life under the ground? Um, one way to do it, we don't as of now have any x-rays that can map underground features. People have been trying for years and years, it's not worked. Uh, but there is a way of identifying what fungi and what soil uh, ecosystems exist in and around the rhizosphere as well as around the entire forest. So I'm moving into 
uh, soil microbiomes and soil metagenomes in a very big way. And a very big way means you will see within a year or two from my lab something that completely transformed our, our data that has already shown that uh, we found complete drastic changes within the the soil is coming the micro this is a planet of microbes right and if you don't do research with microbes i think you're still lagging behind mm -hmm. so i've been working with plants till now and i'm now moving into mm -hmm. the realm of microbes and thank you so much for uh, providing us the opportunity thank you sonia so i really appreciate that you thought of me thank you so much ma'am